to go into Maria's house. Look at you, you look so pretty! Hey guys, Ksenia Pro here and my guest here today is Maria Campbell. She's an amazing newborn baby and uh, portrait photographer based in Potomac, Maryland, right? Yes. Thank you for having us Hi. in your beautiful home. She's so classy. <laughs> Thank you. I love this though, this chandelier is amazing. Thank, Thank you very so much. much. Thank you, Ksenia. Maria owns her own business, a photography business, and she has a home-based studio where she does most of newborn and baby work, unless yes. it's outside, right? So yes. can you talk a little bit about what you do and what kind of sessions do you do mostly? So I work with uh, lots of newborns. That probably accounts for half of my business. I do milestone sessions. I do cake smash sessions, family sessions. I photograph some events, christenings and bar and bat mitzvahs. Okay, so this is like another side of your business, yes. right? Yes, so okay. with my portrait photography, I just utilize natural light. Mm -hmm. So indoors, it's window light. So you would call yourself a natural light photographer, is that right? For my portrait photography, I do use um, strobes for my event photography. Right, correct. But never for... So let's focus on the portrait side of photography, yeah. because I feel like it's your brand, and it's like you have a very distinctive style, which I love. That's right. That's right. Yes. So, what what things you're looking for when you're doing a portrait session? Like, what's your style? How would you describe it? So, my style is very light and airy, um, very natural. I like to capture a combination of candid and some posed um, images. I work with lots of babies and young children. You have to be able to work very much on the fly, you know, to get cooperation you have to know how to engage kids so what I do with uh, little ones uh, if it's babies we use bubbles we use hand puppets they seem to love hand puppets what so, age though because you know so, babies grow so fast okay so. okay so obviously with a newborn there's none of that right. so we're talking about from about four months old they start mm -hmm. to respond so let's start like ages and stages maybe let's cover that so when you yes. work with newborns what are the tricks I know we already talked about it when we did the studio tour yes. but just like quick overview of the things that the babies need and that you use for your sessions. Right, okay. To keep them happy. So so um so it's it's basically a joint effort between myself and the baby's parents. Mm -hmm. So uh, baby's parents will help to prep the baby at home, um, keeping the baby stimulated, giving the baby a bath and a feed right before leaving home. Uh, those things ha seem to help baby to be nice and relaxed when they arrive at the studio right. and hopefully ready to start taking pictures. And then on my end, as we spoke about earlier, we use heat and we use white noise and, um, uh, you know, uh, regular feedings, not on schedule, but as, as needed and mm -hmm. as necessary. Mm -hmm. So every time during the newborn session when I'm changing the setup, uh, we just top up the baby's feed so that we can keep baby nice and right. milk So basically drunk. they need to be warm, they need to be fed, they need to feel kind of comfortable. And, That's and right. So if we have a particularly fussy baby, we start with rat shots mm -hmm. because if we swaddle, that usually helps to settle down the baby. Okay. So yeah. are you looking for like a certain kind of sleep mode of the baby? Because I know there is like a, such a thing as a deep sleep mode for like newborns. Yes. Yes. So, is so, that a thing? Yes. So I've been very lucky that I seem to get smiles from most of my newborn mm. babies. And smiles actually happen when baby is having their REM sleep. So right mm. before... Um, they are about to get into their deep sleep, but you'll see that you'll notice that their eyes start fluttering. Yeah, they change or like the facial expressions, like, like right. It's like a thousand different faces in a second. Right. Basically. Okay. Yeah. That's... Right. Absolutely. So when you see the eyes fluttering, mm -hmm. then you know a smile could be coming. Right. So you have to be so ready. So just for wait that. for the moment to happen. Just be ready. Right. Yeah. And yeah. sometimes you can just run a finger up the baby's oh. cheek and that encourages a smile so okay, it's, it's like stimulation right? you know I don't like to jinx but usually okay. I do get smiles from most of my newborns oh. and um then, knock, knock on the wood yeah yeah <laughs> like I said I don't want to make any right, uh, right, right, jinx right. I never Mostly. promise right. that's right I don't promise anyone and and um I always hope that parents don't ask for that because if they ask okay, we get it's a not, smile <laughs> it's not gonna happen if they ask yeah. but they're usually really happy okay we actually yeah. did for my daughter's session 
Uh, we just met when I was pregnant with my daughter Mia with Maria. So um, she took her pictures, her newborn pictures. They looked amazing. I think we get like a, we got a smile shot. I too. think we did. Yeah, we I did. think we did. Yeah, absolutely. So so, so uh, just going back to the sleep. Mm -hmm. uh, we, in order to, to get the optimal poses from our newborn, um, it's really good if they're in a deep sleep mm -hmm. and the way you know that baby's in a deep sleep is if you lift up their arm and it's limp, mm -hmm. if you, if you just brush their hand and it, it stays open. Uh, then so you, you know, don't move much, so you can basically position them the way you want to. That's right. So that's you go more creative with poses, right? Yes. Yeah, because you see, like I see all those beautiful newborn pictures on the internet, and yes. all of them look creative. But it's probably like one or two shots that you got like a really creative pose. That's and right. most of the session, it's like, can you talk about the format of the newborn session with poses? Right. Okay. So how it goes? Um, if the family are going to be taking pictures with the newborn, mm -hmm. and especially if there's a young sibling. Uh, those are always done up front because a newborn session will take about three hours. So if you're going, if you have a two-year-old brother and you're going to wait until the end of the session, yeah, they're going to melt down. They will melt down. So your best chance is if you start off with those uh, images up front and get those out of the way. Also. You know, parents are not usually looking their best after three hours in an 85-degree right, right. room. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so we do it up front. So we get those shots done. And then what we do next really depends on the baby's temperament. So, as I said, if baby's particularly fussy, then we start with wrap shots. And a trick that I do sometimes is I will put baby's first outfit on Mm -hmm. and then I will swaddle over the top so that when we that unwrap the baby, they're already dressed mm -hmm. for their first. Like outfit change. <laughs> right, okay. So when um, I just want to backtrack a little bit because mm -hmm. when the parents arrive at the studio, uh, sometimes the babies need to nurse or feed immediately. Right. Uh, so what we do is we feed the baby dressed in their first outfit mm -hmm. so that if they fall asleep, which hopefully is the... Um, goal mm -hmm. then we can go straight into photos whereas if they're not dressed and then we have to start yeah, messing like with extra them disturbing for, right, so, for the baby. Right. right so the idea is that we want to disturb the baby as little as possible right. okay mm -hmm. so that's why wrapping over your first outfit is always a good idea um especially if baby is fussy if you if your baby is already asleep um, then it's okay just to go straight into an outfit. Mm -hmm. yeah, and you can really save those wrap shots yeah. for yeah. later or when they need to be settled down. Mm -hmm. okay? That makes sense. Okay, so let's move on to from newborns to sure. what is the next stage that you would describe? So um, as I said earlier, I will photograph a baby at any age. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes parents don't do a newborn session and then they regret not taking those photos. Mm -hmm. And they might reach out to me you know, when baby's already three or four weeks old. And also, lots of people don't actually know that you should do a newborn session within exactly. the first two weeks. So you have to educate your potential clients. Right, right. Mm -hmm. But sometimes people will reach out when their baby is already here. It's two weeks, and sometimes yeah. it's way past the two-week mark. So mm -hmm. I always say that we will, you know, I can do a portrait session for any age baby. Mm -hmm. It's just that we have to go into it knowing that baby may not be sleeping. So do you mind me interrupting you? So what's the best way for a new client who are probably pregnant and expecting a baby to approach you? Like what, how far in advance they should reach out to you and to schedule a newborn session? Right, okay. So they sh ideally um, at the beginning of the second trimester mm -hmm. would be a great time. So maybe around four months into the pregnancy okay. would be a wonderful time. So you time. want it like as early as possible so you already know that there's a baby on the way in. Um, so how do you schedule it? Right, so the way that I, I have my own way of scheduling my newborn sessions and the way that we schedule because those. you cannot predict when the baby is born, right? So. That's right. <laughs> yeah, we don't know when they're coming. But what we do is I choose a date that's five days um, from the due yeah. date. So if your due date is, say, 10th of February, mm -hmm. I would schedule the, the 15th of February or the closest available date. And the reason I do that is because if your baby were to arrive up to nine days early, mm -hmm. we could still use that date. Right. 
But if baby arrives, I always tell my clients that if your baby arrives earlier than earlier still, they need to notify me or mm-hmm. they have a family member reach out to right. me. Just a text message is fine. Mm-hmm. So that we can find a new date. Also, um, I always look at my calendar and five days out from the session date, I will message my client to see how things are going, mm-hmm. see if the just baby's arrived. Sometimes the baby's already arrived and they just mm-hmm. haven't told me. But, you know, if baby has not arrived by their due date, then mm-hmm. it will have to find another date. Push it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So, so what I do, I tend to only book about three sessions each week. Mm-hmm. So that you make your word sessions. Correct. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Correct. I do lots of sessions and at sometimes sometime you know, it might be up to twenty sessions a week. Well, but right. we right. Yeah, I know you're very busy. So. Right, just at the weekend though, because yes. during the week mm-hmm. when I do my newborn sessions Monday through Friday, mm-hmm. I always keep a couple of free days for moving around my newborn right. sessions. That's smart. Mm-hmm. So if you have a little wiggle room for that. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yes. Perfect. So we want to reach out to you a few months ahead and then you Work with a date that's closest to their due date, but then you can move things yes. around if you need to. Okay, yes. that's smart. What if you like? Have you worked with preemies? I have worked with preemies before. Mm-hmm. I've worked with preemies. I've worked with babies that have a feeding tube. So oh, wow. you know, the w- when we uh, take newborn photographs, we have to accommodate all the needs of the baby. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So whatever they need, you know, we're not going to remove the feeding tube so we can exactly. get photos. So we just yeah. work with whatever we have. But this is a have. part of, you know, who they are. If they were That's born right. With, yeah. This is it's how just, they were born. It's like a documenting. I, I know, like, you probably want to get, like, pretty portrait pictures with crazy poses right. for your, you know, creative side of yes. things. But at the same time, you this is for your clients. You're documenting the moment in their lives. Right. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And also, as I said earlier, that the goal is to keep the editing as natural as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, certain things like birthmarks, I always ask my mm-hmm. clients if they yes. would like to have those things retouched right. or not. Right. Let's talk about editing a little bit for the yes. newborn session specifically. So what yes. do you do? Which which software do you use? So I use Lightroom and Photoshop. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I just uh, usually do my culling. I, a, a typical newborn session would be somewhere between 150 to 200 photographs mm-hmm. taken. And my packages are 10, 20, and 30 images. And then family members can be added on to that. Right. So I do my culling. I choose the photographs. I know some... So you're the one who decides which shots uh, to keep and which one to just... Yeah. I mean, sometimes it can be difficult to choose. Mm -hmm. But I always look for the right poses done in the right way and the flat fingers and all the other little details Mm -hmm. that my clients might not necessarily notice. Right, exactly, exactly. Because when you look at the picture of your baby, like, oh, it's cute. This one's cute. That one's cute too. So you wouldn't know the difference as a client. But you as a professional, you probably have a better eye for it. Right. Right. So, okay, so I always like to shoot, um, you know, for any potential newborn photographers. I use my twenty four seventy, and um, I like to use my eighty five millimeter, oh, like a portrait, like a one. Yeah, exactly, so that I can get a very wide aperture to get the detail mm-hmm. shots. So it's like eighty five one point four. Is that the one you have? That's the one, the one point okay. four. Because and you shoot with a Nikon. I shoot with Nikon. Okay. Yes. I'm a Canon girl, so <laughs> fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so I like to use uh, the widest aperture always, um, mm-hmm. just to get that lovely creamy background yeah, and a nice and romantic look to my right, pictures, right. which is why. So the twenty four seventy, because you have like a small studio that's on a smaller side. What do you, what's the different shots that you use both lens for? I mean, each right, one. Right, okay, so for the 85 millimeter, I can't get very far back very often, mm-hmm. so it's more for the face shots, like close very up, close up. shots. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, for some of the detail shots. And then the 2470 is when I need to get more of the setup. In. Right. So let's move on to the next stage. Yes. Um, so after they, they, they're not considered to be a newborn anymore, um, so what's the what the next stage that you would define? So the next, um, for me, the ideal first milestone is when baby can push up 
on their tummy. Mm -hmm. So when you put baby on their tummy, they can hold their head up for a few mm -hmm. seconds without falling. Right. So, so like around three months? Or no, months? that usually doesn't come until four or five months. Okay. Clearly, I don't remember anymore. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's time for another one. <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> Right, so that's the first milestone, and I think the second important milestone is when the baby can sit mm -hmm. independently. So it's after six months, right? Right, right. So those babies, they always need something to do. So I have alphabet blocks, and I have lovely little wooden vintage-looking cars and things mm -hmm. to keep babies busy. So they can busy. play and keep, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I also have lots and lots of sitter outfits. Mm -hmm. um, so What's a sitter out oh, sit outfit bigger. is for, you know, babies. Well, basically, I have outfits for any age baby. Mm -hmm. So my clients never need to bring anything with right. them. Right, and what's a, that's one of the things that I love about your brand, and I think you stand out in the area and in the industry because you have all these little things. And I love how organic your brand looks, like the style is consistent, and I think that will right. attract the right client for your brand. Right, right. Yeah. With that. I try to keep things very consistent, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think that's the best way to go about that's it. That's really you're important. you're going to attract the right client. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Being consistent. You have to, when you go out um, in, uh, into the industry as a newborn photographer, you need to know what your style is and then you shouldn't really deviate from that. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I don't use bright colors. I love detail shots and classic looking portraits mm -hmm. so I don't I really stick to that and and that's my brand and whatever you right. choose to do uh, that identifies you as a photographer but let's go back to when you just started how did you how did you get into newborn so uh, the way I got into taking newborn photos is when I had my daughter mm -hmm. and my daughter how old is, is she now she's 12 oh so it was 12 yeah. years ago oh my god yeah well I, I did it was very it was purely by accident so mm -hmm. I started to buy a few um, bits and pieces and I posed her. But did you did you take any other pictures before you had your daughter? Like did you were did you do well, any photography or was it? Yeah, just... I've always I've always you know loved photography mm -hmm. and, and but not as a professional, just just playing well, around. Or... Well, when I first moved here, I didn't work in the industry for uh, several years mm -hmm. until because I'm only interested in photographing people you moved from where. I moved, I moved from London, England. <laughs> you, right, you, can, so, you can see that happening right. here. <laughs> yes, I moved from England. But um, I, I, well, I'm only interested in taking pictures of people. So I'm, right. I, you know, I don't go and take pictures of landscapes mm -hmm. or, or buildings or anything yeah. like that. So if there's a person that I want to take pictures of a person and mm -hmm. if there's a beach behind them, that's even yeah, better. that's fine. But... <laughs> right, but that's my thing is I love to take portraits. Mm -hmm. So I just fell into it purely by accident mm -hmm. because I took pictures of my daughter and then a friend of mine asked me to take pictures of her children, which I did, and she had a very good social media presence, mm. which that's something. And at that the I'm time, it was just you stand out because, like, twelve years ago, right? Having like, uh, you know, social media was just you right, know, absolutely. In so, a newborn session, see what I did there. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> So so yeah so I uh, so really my that was how I got my first client mm -hmm. was because and it was like basically word of mouth just right and it's always like, word of business. mouth I'm I'm not very savvy with social media mm -hmm. I have to tell you I know you're trying she to isn't. improve she is trying to improve me I need help in this field but. I'm not she really. She needs help, actually, people. If you're watching this, she needs help because she's so good, and nobody <laughs> knows about how good she is. <laughs> I do. All, I'm very lucky that my I have lots of um, referrals, so that's how I get my business. I'm extremely busy through referrals. Yeah, and this is the best way to go about because once you work with the right type of clients, they have probably the same kind of type of friends and people. They right, know, so absolutely. The same circle that you want to reach out to. Right. So my clients are very important to me because that they get me all my work. So yes. I have to be very nice yeah. to my clients. Yes. Keep them happy. I appreciate that. Fed, happy and warm. Just like you That's it. Exactly. <laughs> very, very true. All right. So basically you started taking pictures of your own kids and yes. then other people reached out. They loved what you did with your, you know, your yes. baby's pictures and they yeah. wanted you. And then how did you educate yourself? Um, 
yeah, in the so process? Was, right, so the, the most important things that I taught myself was the newborn safety that we spoke about, mm-hmm. which is the most important thing you need to know before you ha- try to handle a newborn baby. Right. So it's really important to know what you're doing. Um, and then the editing, really. Mm-hmm. Is, you know, so it takes, that's a learning curve. Yeah, because mm-hmm. it's not just about taking the photos. You know, uh, newborn photography is an investment. It's an investment of a financial investment uh, in props and clothing and accessories and backdrops, floor drops. Mm-hmm. It's an investment in time, so the session will take about three hours. Yeah, and it's very the, time consuming. So. It's very time consuming, and then the editing is five hours on average. It's about five hours per session. Per session, right? So we're talking it's about not very much. I feel like it it's not much. well. It may. So not how be, much does it take you to cull the pictures? Well, like okay. So hour? for me to cull the pictures takes about. I don't so so the way that I do my culling is I go through and I write a list. I have a chart that I write a list of all the my favorite images, mm-hmm. and then from there, if I have too many, then I go through and I. So you don't mark them in Lightroom. No, I'm very old fashioned. You should do that. I don't. I don't mark <laughs> them in Lightroom. You can see, like you know how like you you can color code and just like filter. Yes. And you can see all the color coded pictures. That's how I do it. Yeah. Oh so no, I don't. That's yeah. before I even. I only import into Lightroom the images that I'm going to use oh, for okay, my so gallery. Really, okay. I right. See. So I do my initial cull and then I import everything into Lightroom. Mm-hmm. I, I I make everything consistent for color and light. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, with newborns, sometimes their skin tones are very red, and I have to fix that. Sometimes right. that's done in Lightroom, sometimes that's not enough, and I have to do mm-hmm. that again in Photoshop. Because yeah, in Photoshop, you can go into little details and actually yeah, like, fine-tune it a little bit more. Okay. So that's that's a, so basically, um, for any photographers out there looking to do newborn photography, you have to look at how much time you're investing. So mm-hmm. for me, it's about an eight-hour investment. It's a full day of work. And what are my costs? You know, you have to factor that in as well. So right. it's everything that I spend on props, on clothing, the time that I spend shopping for these items, the wear and tear on my equipment, my utilities, my, I, you know, I have to wash and and, right, and right. order all of the garments and the uh, fabrics that I use for all the sessions. Mm-hmm. So that those are all costs. And that time, just like even prepping for the session for a newborn session before right. the client arrives, takes you probably like about an hour just to set it everything does. up and like make sure everything's clean and in order, right? Absolutely, because when the client comes into your studio, your studio should be spotless, yeah. spotlessly clean. That's so important for. Uh, the baby's yeah. safety and also for your uh, parents to feel comfortable. Right, right. And you want to represent your brand. You know that it's, yeah, yeah, absolutely, mm-hmm. absolutely. So, um, you know, when you price your sessions, all of that has to be factored in, mm-hmm. as well as your full day, of your eight-hour day of work. Yeah. yeah. I know that you use a lot of props and this is your thing, but I feel like whoever is starting your newborn photography business, um, you can just keep it simple. Right. Um, instead of like investing a lot of money in those little cute things that you can use once. Absolutely. Um, so I think keep it a little bit more basic, right? So the so if you had if I had to say what do you need to start your mm-hmm. newborn business? So as well as the obvious things that you need, like a decent camera and portrait lens. One right. portrait lens is all mm-hmm. you need. I would invest in uh, posing, a couple of posing fabrics, just mm-hmm. neutral white. So posing fabrics is something like uh, you use as a background, as a backdrop? Or yeah, what yeah. so basically uh, I use, I have a bead bag poser that mm-hmm. has a frame, but you could just start out using a, a bean bag or mm-hmm. a, a big pillow, mm-hmm. and then you just stretch your fabric over it. You can you can just clamp the fabric right. so you get that nice stretched fabric, mm-hmm. and you can use that for your poses. So, so you what kind of material are you looking for when you get those fabrics? So those fabrics, you can even go to a local fabric store. You don't need to buy from a prop vendor, and you right. can save some money if you just. But what, what what texture was that? so cotton? Yeah. So usually like a cotton jersey, like mm-hmm. a thick, stretchy mm-hmm. cotton mm-hmm. jersey. And you can make your own. You can just get So it's nice and soft, but it has some texture as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So as long as you've got a couple of different colors, you know, just very neutral, as I said, 
and um, you know that's how you can start mm -hmm. building your business. So yeah. you know, and like maybe a few wraps. Um, yeah, so mm -hmm. you can use the same the same piece of material that you have cut for your posing fabric. Mm -hmm. You can cut your own wrap from that very okay. fabric. Oh, that's that's yeah. actually so that you makes have sense. Yeah, right. So it coordinates. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Okay. All right, so let's move on to the next because uh, I know that you do a lot of. Um, like the next milestone is a one year old, right? Yes. So you do a lot of cake smashes and just like general like I first do. birthday sessions. So can you talk about those a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. So I have to say that um, the most difficult sessions are usually the cake smash sessions. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is that really we don't feed our babies in the modern day. We don't feed babies um, very sweet things and cakes. Right. We also don't really tend to let the babies get messy and stay messy. So the first thing is that they don't, they're not used to the taste or the sweetness mm -hmm. of the cake. It's probably the, their first time trying it, right? Yeah. And also they get their hands all greasy from mm -hmm. the buttercream mm -hmm. um, and they don't like their hands to be dirty. So sometimes it can be a challenge. Mm -hmm. um, and there's some tricks that we can talk about for okay. the cake smash session. Yeah. So I always ask my clients to give their baby a cupcake a few days before the session. And okay, just allow so them they to know what it is. Right. Yeah, so they get used to the sponge and they get used to the buttercream. Now, mm -hmm. um, if you're considering doing uh, cake smash sessions, you should know that um, you should always have a buttercream cake. And mm -hmm. the reason you do buttercream and not fondant is because fondant is a choking hazard. Mm -hmm. so, okay, so that's a good point. Right, it's, so yeah. You, want, you wouldn't even think about it. Right, you mm -hmm. wouldn't necessarily think about it. So I have a great bakery that I use, a local bakery. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's important, I think. So you're the one who's getting the cake for the session, for your session. Right? I do. I mm -hmm. source everything. So I have a session fee that covers my expenses. Mm -hmm. So anything that I need to buy for the session, including a custom cake topper with the baby's name on, mm -hmm. including uh, fresh foliage and flowers and the cake. Mm -hmm. And the reason is that when I first started doing cake smash sessions, People would bring their own all cakes. All kinds of things, right? They would bring all kinds of things, but not only that, people are busy, parents are very busy, and they have the I best see. will in the world. They, they intend to get that custom cake, but it right. just doesn't happen, so they're yeah. rushing to the supermarket on the right. day of and, and coming with things that just... Ugly. It's ugly, ugly. Yeah. but it, also it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't necessarily tie in with anything... That right, because you style your sessions in a certain way, right? I style the sessions in a certain way, and it's very time-consuming, mm -hmm. and it's expensive, right. and it's such a shame if your cake that's the center... It doesn't match, yeah. If it doesn't match, or if it's really right. not really a very um, professionally put together right, right. piece expectation reality <laughs> right exactly that's exactly right so i like i'm a bit of a control freak Cassania. Yeah. so i like to have complete control of mm -hmm. my sessions the other thing is because um babies don't many babies and i dare say probably a good 80 to 90 percent of babies mm -hmm. will not Touch independently go for the cake right so, so encourage them really. well we put cereal in the back of the cake so oh, i always okay. ask the, the parents to bring some puffs or some cheerios mm -hmm. that we just put into the frosting so they the reach for the those but it looks like they're reaching for the cake right yeah and then they get frosting on their hand and mm -hmm. it looks like they're eating the cake mm -hmm. oh, so okay. we do that i never knew that so that's actually a good trick to yeah, do yeah we do that and i always tell parents as well don't bring a hungry baby it's a big, <laughs> it's a big mistake, because if the baby's already hungry, they get very, very upset and mm -hmm. angry. They get frustrated too. It's, yeah, because they're not, you're not going to feed them cake for the sake of getting them fed, you know. Right. Okay. So they shouldn't be overly fed. So you know, perhaps give them at least half of their lunch. Mm -hmm. so they still need to have room for a little bit of dessert. But mm -hmm. you know, if you bring them having not had a feed. That's a bad idea. Yeah. And the other thing is, um, I always schedule, and this is critical, I always schedule my milestone sessions and my cake smash sessions around the baby's nap schedule. So when the parents come to me, they say, what availability do you have for my baby's six-month session or for my one-year-old session? My first question is always, what is your baby's nap schedule? Right. Because, if because we, every baby is different. 
Every baby's different on a different schedule. And if they nap at one o'clock and we're mm-hmm. trying to do a cake smash at 12.30, it's just not going to go very well. No. And the thing with a, a milestone session is, and this is something that as a baby photographer that you have to be prepared for, is that now and again, um, you will have to reschedule a, a session where you have a, a, a baby that's just not cooperating for whatever reason. They could be teething. Have it happened a lot in your experience? No, it it happens. It's just the worst case scenario. It happens right? minimally for mm-hmm, me, but mm-hmm. it would happen a lot more if I did sessions during that time. Right. We do it when babies at their best. So sometimes, mm-hmm. but you know, in the morning after they're their first active, nap, basically. Right. So when they're at their happiest, we do that to maximise our chances because we don't want to have to have people come back. It's a pain having to have your clients come back. And also, it's a pain for the clients. Yeah, because it's a pain they... for everybody. Right, okay. so Because even just getting your baby out of the door, that's like a lot has to it's happen. It's a lot of work. <laughs> so, it, so we need to get it right first time for our mm-hmm. clients. Mm-hmm. So, so it's not that they may not think necessarily that, that they should work around the baby's schedule. So it's up to us to know that. So right. ask the right Educate kind of questions. Clients. Absolutely. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let me uh, let me ask you a question about the cost of the cake smash session. Okay. Because do you, so all of your costs are just kind of hidden in your session fee, or do you charge extra for those, you know, for the cake and those extra things that you mentioned? that you? Because I know that you do all the the props and, like, decorating the studio in a certain style right. for, this, for each session. I will say that the cake smash session is my least profitable session. Mm-hmm. Because you spend and so In much. fact, it's really not worth it, but people... People like, like to do it, and I, I like to keep my clients happy. Oftentimes, these are people who have brought their newborns, they've brought, they've done their family photos. Mm-hmm. I've done milestone sessions for them, so and they ask me for a cake smash. I won't say right, no, right. but the amount of time that I spend um, really means that these are not very profitable sessions, even though it seems expensive, probably from the client's point of view. Mm-hmm. But I'm providing the cake. Um, an average cake will cost somewhere between thirty and fifty to fifty five dollars. Yeah. I just bought my most expensive cake topper, which is a wooden uh, custom cake topper, which is a one time use because mm-hmm. it's got the baby's name on. Oh, right, right, and it yeah. was close to fifty dollars wow. for this one cake topper. Now that's a lot more than I would mm-hmm. usually spend. You know, my other costs for this session were not so high. It was just some simple foamy. Mm-hmm. So a custom cake topper will cost in the region of $15. And these are one-time use right, items. Right. Cool. That's right. The, the cake smash is not really a money mm-hmm. maker. Mm-hmm. I mean... It does it bring you a lot of business though? Because I know those are like the cutest pictures of the baby that you can see online, like all those cake smashes. Right. And because you style them so well, I feel like it attracts more a new business to you, right? It does attract new business and also the people who I do cake smashes for, I usually do family sessions for them down the road. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know... So it's like a good way to bring clients in the door and then once they experience um, the session with you, they hooked up, right? (laughs) (laughs) I I know that you have a lot of, you know, repeat clients. Right. Yes, yeah, I do. Yeah, I I do. I mean, I enjoy doing the cake smash sessions, but Mm -hmm. they are very expensive and time consuming. Time setting up, cleaning up, because they are pretty messy. It's a good idea to follow the cake smash with some classic portraits. So clean Mm -hmm. the baby up. And so do you do the cake smash first, and then if you need to do some portrait, you do it last? Yes, yeah, so it's either a bath or it's it's um, a simpler setup with a mm-hmm. second outfit. So the reason I do them last is because it is a cake smash. Mm-hmm. It's not a portrait session, and babies have a very small window of cooperation, and right. if you don't catch them... Mm-hmm. Uh, if you don't catch that window, it might only be 20 minutes or half an hour. Right. So you do the important thing first, and then whatever happens, happens, right? Yes, because mm-hmm. I usually just give five or six of the portraits mm-hmm. to, as an add-on to the, five to or the six cake. Five pictures, right? Yeah, well, yeah. they get, so a cake smash will be anywhere between like 10 to 40 pictures, my various packages. But mm-hmm. um, uh, some of those pictures will be classic portraits, uh, and those are always done second to the cake right. smash. Right. Yeah. Because see, when I did Mia's, I did her cake smash session myself. 
<laughs> I had help though. But we did her pictures first and then the cake smash. But it worked out fine, but I wouldn't even think about doing it the other way around. Right, because, because like, people want... have paid for a cake smash and the thing right. is that once a baby of a year old, once they melt down, they're yeah. not coming back. Right, right. You know, unless they go away for two hours for a nap and yeah, come back, they don't have that much time. To no, use. so it has to be wrapped up inside an hour. So mm -hmm. an hour start to finish and that's that's including um, set up. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm already set up when my client arrives, but mm -hmm. that's including dressing the baby. Right. You need maybe 15 minutes in front of the cake because mm -hmm. they won't last too much longer than that. Right. Then we clean the baby up and we do our second setup. Mm -hmm. So do you have any other tricks in your bag to keep the baby's attention? So again, with, with uh, babies of this age, we use puppets. Um, mm -hmm. We use iPad or iPhone to play uh, songs, music. So somebody's um, holding it behind you, so they'll look. Yeah, somebody's the holding. Sometimes I'll tape it to the window. Oh, okay. Actually, oh okay, that's okay. cool. Because this is the light coming through through the window. They're looking at the window basically at the iPad, right? Yeah, so this yeah. is perfect. So it's we perfect just setup. that's right. I mean, we do whatever it takes. Yeah, <laughs> really. I can imagine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It just you just never know when you're working with children and babies. You never know what's going to happen. So when yeah. you have siblings coming for a session, like yes. older kids, how do you deal with that? Well, um, do they come for like newborn session or like milestone sessions as well? I do both. So when they come for a newborn session, um, sometimes there's a little bit of jealousy going on mm -hmm. because they have a new brother or sister, and now and they're all the intention the goes there. Especially yes, in the photo shoots. Right. Yeah. So as hard as it is to take pictures of a two, three, four year old, mm -hmm. it's twice as hard when they Double have a the new trouble. baby. Mm -hmm. Right to contend with exactly. So, um, you know, lots of bribery. I do have a treasure box. Oh, can I you use. talk about that? Because I think it's a very neat idea. Where, yeah, yeah, so I have a Where treasure box. Where invented it? Or did you come up with it yourself? Well, you? I mean, I think I got the idea from the orthodontist, quite honestly. Okay, Where I okay. take my kids who has a treasure Whatever box. Whatever it takes. <laughs> but I, I, so I have a treasure box, and I always tell the, the siblings that if they're good and they smile for their pictures... They get to go in my treasure box. Mm -hmm. and so what, what is a treasure box? Let's explain. So it's just a treasure box that I picked up from the local uh, Michaels, I think. So, so what's inside the treasure so inside box? Inside the treasure box is basically an assortment of either things that my kids have brought home in goodie bags from parties. It could be anything. So every time I... Can I bring you my goodie bags? Please. <laughs> Please, I'm always, all over the house. I'm always looking for drunk, junk for my treasure box. And sometimes if I'm running a bit low, then I will go to Target mm -hmm. and stock up on Pokemon cards, on, you know, uh, you probably... Play-Doh, play you know, the little yeah, Play-Dohs. Yeah, yeah. mm -hmm. So anything, you know, costs like under four bucks, basically. Yeah. Anything from one to four dollars. And if you can even go to like a dollar store, like five below, because there's so kids, many different things. That's right. They don't mm -hmm. care what it is. Yeah. Are they just happy to go? It's the idea of getting something. That's, that's right. Yeah, you don't exciting. have to spend a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And this is what makes my mini sessions so successful, by the way, is mm -hmm. that I do take a treasure box to all of my mini sessions. So mini sessions, you mean family sessions, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. When I do mm -hmm. my seasonal mini sessions, because a lot of my families have babies, and, well, children, toddlers and children. Mm -hmm. I always take the treasure box there too. Right, right. That always helps. Just to keep yes. them organized and excited about the end of the session. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, okay. that always helps things to go much smoother. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. Yeah. And just, just make it fast, you know, because they, again, siblings, they don't have much patience. Right. So I know that working with children and babies can be challenging. Can you remember like any of the most challenging session that you had or maybe something happened that didn't go according to plan? Sure. So I think my most challenging session, uh, my most challenging newborn session was in the early days when I didn't know uh, about using heat uh, in the studio. And mm -hmm. I had a baby that cried continuously for the entire session. Oh, so what happened? What was the problem? I think looking back, um, it could have been anything, but I think that had we have kept the studio really hot. 
Oh, that would have really helped her. because right. I noticed that every time I uncovered the baby, she mm-hmm. would cry uncontrollably, mm-hmm. and that was to do with because keeping baby so uncomfortable and comfortable. right. So, so you know, that's that's rule number one is keeping a warm studio, mm-hmm. so overly warm. You have to be sweating in there. Yes, if we're not sweating, it's not going to be warm mm-hmm. enough for the baby. Mm-hmm. Well, imagine if you're naked, because babies are mostly likely even even naked, right. they just like have a thin layer of clothes, and they just came out of the womb, so they're not even used to you know. They don't have any body fat. Work. So, but any other like crazy things that happened? So that I'm, honestly, I've had. Remember? <laughs> oh, I've I've seen all sorts. I mean, I've seen you know bloody noses uh, where you know siblings are belting each other. I've had someone running around the Jefferson Memorial with no pants on. <laughs> fortunately, <laughs> he was only about four years old, fortunately. You know, so you know, when you're working with babies and young kids, you just don't know what's going to happen. That's precious. Yeah. So when I work with adults on a rare occasion when there's no kids, mm-hmm. I always think, wow, this is so easy. Because yeah. people are actually cooperating and listening. Right. And it just it goes yeah. past that, right? Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, I love what I do and I get so much pleasure out of it and I know how to talk to kids because mm-hmm. I've got my own kids. I love children. I love working So what's your favourite age group to work with? You know, I, I get something out of every, every session that I do. Mm-hmm. I love working with the newborns and I have to tell you that, um, you know, once I had a mum ask me how I knew I was going to get good pictures because her first newborn session didn't go very well. Mm -hmm. And I know I'm going to get good pictures because there's no time limit really on the session. And I don't tell people this because otherwise that couldn't, that may not go well. Yeah. And it doesn't sound professional. Like it feels like you're going to spread it to the whole, um, the full day. I don't know. We Mm -hmm. don't want the session to go on any longer than is necessary, but Mm -hmm. if the baby's not cooperating, we will persevere until we get the shots. Right. And with newborns, because they don't talk and they can just feed them and they fall asleep. uh, Most of the time. In theory. Yeah. But I mean, you can just keep repeating. That's right, we just over and over again, eventually it happens. Eventually, mm-hmm. yeah, eventually they will. Right. Might take and they don't talk back, so. <laughs> That's what I like, they just don't talk back to me. Right. I can't use okay. a pacifier Just stay there, relax. My <laughs> <laughs> okay, but did you have any, like, accidents? Because I see those hilarious pictures online with, like, baby pooping all over the, you know, the dad. And, well, you know. I, you know, I do do some naked shots, mm-hmm. but I'm not really big into naked shots of babies. Mm-hmm. So you keep a diaper on? Like well, a diaper no, I d- usually. I mean, I do some naked shots on the bean bag with the posing fabrics, but those are all washable. Mm-hmm. And, in fact, we had this happen yesterday uh, where I've had to put three layers of posing fabrics right into the washing machine. <laughs> um, but, you know, uh, it doesn't happen to me as often because I try to keep some clothes on the baby, right. I think, yes. So I know that you're very busy and you probably do like consistent work of, are you tired of doing the same things over and over again? Uh, trying to, are you trying to like reinvent yourself? Or like where do you get any inspiration? Right. Okay. So I'm not, t- I never get tired because all of my sessions are completely different. Every baby really? is different. Mm-hmm. So every session is different. And so I, I am interested in adding some things to what I do. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm going to start offering glitter sessions. What's this, a glitter session? So a glitter session is where we, we it's done with little girls. And girls of any age, really. In fact, if you'd like to be my model, I'd be more than happy. Me or Mia? Yeah. <laughs> Both of you, but I think Mia might try to eat the glitter. She might be a bit too young. She might be a bit too young. She's two and a half. I know, but yeah, she might still try to eat the glitter. I don't know. Two and a half is a bit young. No, she doesn't. You think she would? Mm -mm. Okay. So the way that the glitter sessions work is that you basically use a darker background paper, which is a new thing for me because I only work mm-hmm. with white and bone savage paper. Mm-hmm. The reason you use the dark is be- so that the glitter really pops out. Mm-hmm. Um, and you basically dress up your subject in a gorgeous dress or outfit and something in their hair like a sparkly crown. And you Just give- like a glam. Glam. Yes, and mm-hmm. you just give them a bunch of glitter, like 
more glitter than you would like to have all over the floor. It sounds really messy. Are you sure you want to do it? Not really. <laughs> when I start doing it, then we'll see. Okay. okay. But the idea is that you just give them the glitter and they throw it mm -hmm. and they, they play with it. They rub mm -hmm. their feet in it and they get really messy. So it's just getting well, it's them, cute. it's, it's beautiful, yeah, you get the portraits of the, the glitter, you know, if they can blow the glitter mm -hmm. and it's in front of the subjects. Um, and I also, like when it sticks to the skin, that's kind of pretty. It's just, really it's pretty. Like, it's messy, but it's pretty at the same time, so it shows the personality and at the same time it's like, you know. It's yeah. a good-looking shot. It's yeah. a beautiful, yeah, it's beautiful. And also, um, if you don't get enough glitter for your liking in your pictures, there's always Photoshop overlays. Uh -huh. So I will all also use, it will be a combination of real glitter and Photoshop. Online, you can buy glitter overlays. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you can just add more glitter so it's more airborne. Because when you're taking pictures of glitter flying through the air, yeah, it just doesn't, there might not I've be done enough airborne glitter. It doesn't glitter. happen every, every time. Like the shot doesn't happen every time. Right. So mm -hmm. when your when your subject is looking fantastic and smiling just right and everything, exactly. and if you if that shot doesn't have enough glitter, mm -hmm. then you can just add especially it. with kids, you can't stage it as much as with with adults. That's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Pretty okay. Much. Perfect. So okay. I'm excited. So what? How are you gonna do it? Are you said you're gonna. So um, I have a couple of models. Yeah, yeah, I have a couple of models coming. Yeah. So you're gonna introduce the new format of sessions. Uh, to your clients, and you're right. going to use model like yes, um, because baby, baby models. <laughs> I'm going to use the models. These kids yeah. are very cooperative. So okay, so you can so pick yeah. them, right? I pick them because yeah. they're really good. Were they? Um, uh, did you do a session for them before? How do you know them? Um, yes, yes. Uh, so they're, both they're of them are clients. great clients. Mm -hmm. They're both great clients, and it's my way as well of giving back to my really good clients. Right. Yeah, that's very important too. So I know that you're very busy. You said sometimes you have up to 20 sessions in a week. And yes. I know that you have two kids, two school-age kids and a husband I do. and a house. How do you do it all? So I am very busy. Um, I am very organized. Being organized and responsive is so important. So when I get, um, however busy I am, when I respond to my clients, I always go into as much detail as possible. I'm always really careful to address all of their questions. Mm -hmm. um, and I've had people tell me that they've noticed I've been the most responsive mm -hmm. of, of everyone they reached out to. sounding from just the way you communicate with them. Right. right. I mean, mm -hmm. sometimes I take longer to respond than I would like when it's really busy. Yeah, it happens to me too. But when I do take the time to respond, I'm careful to do it in as much detail as possible. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I always plan my newborn sessions Monday through Friday. I never book weekend newborn sessions because the three-hour window that I need for a newborn session, I can't really hold oh, that okay. time at the weekend because the sessions are unpredictable. So mm -hmm. if your baby didn't arrive on time and then we have to reschedule it, I may not have three hours the following weekend to shoot that session exactly. so it's always monday through friday both parents are usually off in the first two weeks mm -hmm. anyway yeah so it works for both sides right right absolutely so um the sessions that i do at weekends i do my some of my events at weekends i do lots of family portraits barnstone sessions cake spashes so cake when do you have time to because i know that your daughter does ballet and your Marcus does uh, soccer, soccer and basketball. Yeah. So how do you manage it all? Because you're right. a soccer mom and a full-time self-employed photographer. Right. The nice thing is that about what I do is that I'm always there to pick my kids up from school. Mm -hmm. And I'm always able to dedicate time to my family. Um, and I love that I can do that. You know, my kids don't go to before and after care. And usually I even cook. Right. <laughs> Sometimes. Well, her kitchen looks amazing. My kitchen's a little bit too clean, right? <laughs> for cooking. But I try to cook healthy food for my family. This is not sexy. I'm actually going to roast the chicken right now. This is the side of the business that is not that glamorous. <laughs> so you're trying to feed your family, right? Yeah, I've got to try and feed my family at some point. <laughs> Otherwise, it's Lido's every night. Um, the way, so, so what I do is 
for example, so with Sophia does ballet, I will mm-hmm. take my laptop with me and I can edit, I can spend that time editing while oh, I'm waiting smart. for that. Yeah, at least like call, like look through the picture or something easy, right? That's right. And most of my editing, I tend to do really early morning editing or late mm-hmm. night. So I, I'm an early riser. So sometimes I wake up as early as four o'clock. Oh, wow. And I will so work. it's still dark outside. And, you and I will edit. I could finish a gallery before breakfast. Oh, wow. Right? And then late at night. So when it's in but the these business. are the best hours because I, I usually edit late at night when me is already asleep because nobody's disturbing you anymore. Like, and you know, you can just sit down and focus, right? Right. The problem is that my kids are going to bed later and later, right? <laughs> but, so now they have to. But be. they don't need you as much. Like, they right don't need right? me, no. Yeah. They don't need me. And the fact that they I don't want to hang out with you anymore, no. so. No, but I can do my job and be in the same room as my kids. Yeah, you know? that's exactly. I mean, I can watch a movie and edit photos yeah, at the same that's time. Exactly. So. Because my problem, she's two and a half now, so she wants me all the time. So the only time I have to edit is when she's asleep. Right, yeah, that's that's a tough age. That's a very tough age. So how do you stay organized uh, with your emails and your, you know, just business side of things? All right, so the business side of things, um, I never calendar anything until a retainer is paid. Mm -hmm. So obviously you're very successful now. I know it took you a little bit of time to get to the point where you're at now. But for people who are just starting... um, to do photography and like newborn photography, baby photography uh, specifically, how much do you would you expect to make from this? Well, if um, you don't mind me asking. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So right now I'm making well into six figures. Okay. Okay. Um, I think that uh, every year I've seen growth for year on year. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a good factor to yeah. To consider. I mean, I think as you make money, you invest back in your business mm-hmm, mm-hmm. in ways that you steam fit that's going to help you to grow your business. But when you started, like, how fast did you grow? Do you remember? I grew very fast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I grew very fast. I think that you have to be realistic and when you start out, maybe use models mm-hmm. and, and use, you know, everyone has friends with young kids right. and babies you just start by doing to free get your portfolio going. right to get mm-hmm. your portfolio because you don't really want to start charging people before you're experienced right. Right. and um you know then you have work to show for it and then you'll see growth in your work not just mm-hmm. exactly especially know. like the first few years are crucial and like in that learning curve and just like figuring out your brand and the way you right want to be seen. absolutely yeah. And like, there's a little bit of investment in the beginning, right? Because you get, you have to get your camera, your lens, your equipment, right, and the props and everything, right. Mm-hmm. So you don't have to invest much in props up front. So that can come later. Mm-hmm. So I I reinvest money that I make. I reinvest some of it back into mm-hmm. props. Yes, yeah. mm-hmm. but you know, this is I, I love what I do, and I'm able to do it and still juggle everything in my life and mm-hmm. be there for my kids. While at the same time, I'm you know making a great salary, yeah, absolutely. and I'm my own boss, yeah, which and you can control your own schedule. Paid. But at yeah. the same time, we're in a great area though, too, because it really depends where you're located. Because, like, somewhere in right. the, like if you're somewhere in the middle of nowhere in the Midwest, like it's probably going to be different just the amount of money that you can make, right? Do you think that's a factor, right? I, I, I do think that can play into it because I've been very spoiled and I have not had to do much marketing. Mm-hmm. Um, to get the business that I get, um, maybe if you were in a location that was not so affluent as the DC area, mm-hmm. um, then you might have to work harder with social media and marketing. No, but people are having kids everywhere, so yeah, that's right. There's a market for this for, for that's photography, right. absolutely. Mm-hmm. And also, you have to remember the cost of living. So the cost of living here is very expensive exactly. for us too, and our expenses are huge. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you were somewhere else in the Midwest, where mm-hmm. your cost of living is much lower then your session pricing can be uh, you know according to that that's right, a factor right. lower too. but you still make the same you know percentage of what you want to get yeah, yeah. that's right mm-hmm. that's right all right well thank you so much maria for joining us today and sharing your insight thank you Cassandra. Uh, it's great to have you as friend it's always good because we, we have too. like long phone calls complaining about things to each other the things that we can only understand that's right <laughs> and like late night editing and everything and juggling everything i know work and family but thank you so much 
much for taking time to do this with me, to sit Thank down you and show you inside. So any last bits of inspiration for other aspiring photographers who want to do newborn and family photography? So my advice is just to perfect your craft, um, work as hard as you can to learn the uh, most important elements of the business. So the editing side, um, maybe sign up for a uh, creative live. Yeah, classes. that's a great resource. Right? Yeah, absolutely. The newborn mm -hmm. safety. Um, just keep reinvesting in your business and mm -hmm. your, your business will grow. Um, just work hard, be organized. Try to... My business philosophy with my clients is to under-promise and over-deliver. So I try to deliver my galleries on time, um, or at least I'm getting better about that. <laughs> um, I always, uh, you know, I try to fulfill my clients' requests and keep everyone happy. Yes. So, you know, when you're working with people, it's always good to remember that you know, their vision might not be the same as yours, but they are the reason that we're in business. So keep your clients happy. Right. And they will send people your way. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you so much again. Thank you so much. You've yeah, spent a whole cool. day to yeah, do this. This is so wonderful. Thank you. I hope I hope it came out great. I mean, I hope you got some bits in there that you can use. Yeah, of course. Yeah, there's a lot there. Yeah, thank there you is. so much. Yeah, that was a great insight. I love how you talk about all this because it's very natural and obviously you know what you're doing. So, yeah, good, good. All right, I'm glad it came over natural because I'm not the most natural person in front of the camera.